So, in this lecture we are going to talk about sampling methods under fixed frequency current mode control. So, here uh, you know we have already discussed in the previous lecture the digitization method for multi loop control. Uh, so, we have some basic idea. So, we will talk about overview of sampling method in digital current mode control, then we will talk about mixed signal current mode control and the waveform, then fully digital con uh, current mode control and the control waveform. So, first we will talk about mixed signal peak current mode control. When you say mixed signal, we have discussed that current inductor current sense will be sense inductor current in the analog domain. So, this is in the analog domain, this is in the analog domain, whereas the voltage loop is in the digital domain. So, this is in digital domain and we have discussed and in fact, we will see as we move forward because the digital domain we can actually tune the controller we can program this reference current because we can put a muxing operation. So, that either we can pass the control output or we can set some nonlinear value thresholding of the current in terms of protection circuit. We can easily put a uh, you know saturation block here like this kind of saturation block you can easily incorporate by this digital function okay, algorithm. And we can also do some trajectory based control because current will simply follow it. So, that means there are many advantages for keeping the digital loop uh, that voltage loop in the digital domain, but the keeping current loop in the analog domain. So, in this architecture since the current is in analog we need a D to A converter and here voltage already have a A to D converter. Now, how does it work? So, if you take the control A from as usual we need some time of conversion for A to D as well as the computational time. So, naturally our sampling clock which is used here. So, here we are using a sampling clock here is FSM. This is in synchronism with the switching clock but with a time delay. So, sampling age will come fast. So, that will send a comment to the ADC that we need a sample at this point, but the data will be available after some, some time because there will be A to D conversion time followed by the controller computation time. So, your peak reference current which is actually output of the DAC and it is the output of the digital controller followed by a DAC that will also be ready at this time because this is a peak reference current you see it is ready. When it is ready then we start the switching operation. So, we have to select this edge in such a way we get sufficient time in this case we talk it about TS which is include conversion time and computation time in such a way that data should be ready the control output should be ready at the point of switching clock when it is uh, uh, in appear because we are talking about trailing edge modulation which is nothing but the peak current mode control. The rest of the process once you generate the peak reference current it is exactly same as analog peak current mode control because you see this RS and Q these are already digital and the output of the component is also digital. So, the only analog part is the current sensor and the uh, you know the analog comparator and you need a D to A converter for converting the controller output to the to generate the reference current. So, this is called trailing edge modulation because uh, trailing edge modulation because it is peak current mode control it is well known, but it is also called interval to sampling because we are taking sampling at the falling edge of the voltage that means when the switch is off. Now, Mixed signal current mode control you can also have a valley current mode architecture because it is a leading edge architecture where we know basic you know fundamental block uh, algorithm is known because in leading edge when the switching frequency clock comes then switch turns off and switch turn on when the inductor current hit the valley current and then again it will continue to turn on until the next clock is come. So, next clock is comes here. Again in this method we have to generate the valley current reference reference current and interestingly in digital control you can easily reconfigure this block and this block in such a way that you can the same architecture can be used for both peak current mode as well as valley current mode control because you need to only change this block in order to represent you do not need to change the terminal of the comparator because that can be easily. So, you have to sync uh, the reference current can be used as a valley or a peak only you have to change the algorithm as well as the modulation mechanism. So, what will be the clock and this RS flip flop will replace. So, here whenever the switching clock will come that is the bottom line 
then switch will be turn off and when it will actually hit the lower limit then switch will again turn on. So, this algorithm of this latch circuit as well as this clocking you can easily reconfigure in digital control. So, you can use the same mixed signal architecture for peak as well as valley. Here again you have to take the sample a little bit earlier than your actual switching uh, switching clock comes because you need to provide time for sampling as a conversion time of the ADC as well as a computational time. And since sample is captured during the on time, so this is known as it is all, of course we told it is a leading edge modulation and it is known as interval one sampling because we are taking during the on state of the switch. Okay. So, we can use the same hardware, but not this block a replacement of this block then that will represent a valley current mode control. Here we are using that you know uh, this, this architecture is uh, for dedicatedly used for valley. But I am saying if you want to use a generic peak or valley, so you simply change this algorithm and the clock, then you can use the same architecture for peak as well as valley. So, if you can implement peak and valley, then what is wrong with the average current mode control? Yes, you can do. So, in average current mode control, we are only showing the averaging technique in the analog domain, but there are many advanced architecture in digital which easily can do average current mode control in fully digital. But in analog, you know traditionally since you are sensing inductor current, we can pass through a low pass filter to extract the average value, then it is compared with the reference and the reference is giving the average current. So, this is like for example, if you take a LED driver or PFC, so your average inductor current has to follow your reference trajectory. So, this reference trajectory can be generated from here, either there can be a con uh, controller or you can have a just a current reference for you know for constant battery charging application and so on. Then the average current output error that means the reference current minus the average inductor current that error will pass through a PI controller so that you want to minimize the steady state error so that the average value should track the reference. And the rest of the logic you know there has to be uh, a short wave form. In fact, that also you can generate uh, you know through digital controller if you go for full digital implementation, but in analog you can keep it in analog. So, here you can actually change the reference command from the digital very effectively you know or if required you can also close the loop. So, that means this is the same method we adopted for average current mode control in analog control the only difference is the voltage loop in digital. If you go for analog the low pass frequency filter how to select the cutoff frequency because you need to extract the average. So, you may not get the ideal average. So, you need to get something like a this kind of averaging because if you extract if you do the Fourier series analysis of the inductor current you will get DC component then you will get fundamental harmonic. So, but you cannot eliminate the entire fundamental harmonic. So, there will be some amount of thing because you cannot have a low pass filter bandwidth almost 0 then your current loop bandwidth will be extremely low. So, you need to provide some amount of ripple permissible ripple. So, that you can extend little bit about the current loop bandwidth by, by extending the low pass filter bandwidth. Once you extend the objective is to control the average current to track the reference current and how to do that we know that the inductor current sense can pass through a low pass filter then it is subtracted from the reference. So, this should be reference subtraction and this is actually the error current here and it passed through a current controller and it is compared to a short wave form and then it will generate the and this is basically a modulator block PWM modulator trailing edge modulator. And then current controller low pass filter typical thumb rule is that the low pass filter bandwidth that means is generally uh, you know this low pass filter is one, uh, one tenth of the switching frequency. It should be much lower than the switching frequency. So, one tenth is a good thumb rule you know is a good choice. So, now if you go to fully digital current mode control architecture then we are keeping the digital current, current in the digital loop and we have discussed in the method of digitization either we can use high sampling of the current or we can use you can use an emulated ripple. So, that you can get more or less the current waveform at least we can retain some information of the ripple. So, how does it work? So, if you take one sample let us have this waveform. Suppose 
this dotted line is the actual inductor current actual or maybe the sense inductor current you can say analog inductor current suppose you have sense more or less the same inductor current now you see at the very beginning of the turn on time that means when the switch is about to turn on you sample the current then with sample current you add this slope so this is mc which is nothing but the slope of this emulator that means this emulator we add this kind of ram kind of characteristics so which is a like a staircase ram and this ram will be added with the sample current but you do not know this slope whether it can be exactly the the rising slope of the current or it may be different and there are many paper on this because it is very difficult to get the exact inductor slope and even if you do that in the you know first scale stability point of view there can be issue so we'll uh, we'll discuss some aspect of current loop stability with only open current loop when you go to the stability analysis and the modeling technique but here i want to show that fully digital current mode control you are taking the sample current and adding the that emulated ram which is a ripple emulator but this is practically not possible to implement why because when you take the sample of the current you cannot immediately use it because adc will have some conversion time and the computational time but we still need the valley current because we need to add the slope so we cannot take like earlier case take the sample here and add it then it will not a valley current right so we need a valley current information but we cannot process immediately so what is the solution so natural choice is you give one cycle delay that means you capture the current sample here but you use it in the next cycle so that you can get sufficient time for the conversion and that is the practically feasible implementation where you see the dotted line again is your inductor current this is your inductor current and you are capturing the inductor current wave from here so green one is the sample value of the inductor current but you are adding this sample current so this is extended this wave form is taken here and you are added ramp here short tooth here and this is like a as i told so this will add like a short tooth wave form so you are adding this ramp in the next cycle with the sample value so that you will get sufficient time for the conversion of this adc because you want to retain the valley current information similarly if you capture the inductor current here it will be used in the next cycle so by that way you will implement and i'll show you when you analyze the current loop stability because of this one sample delay even if we use you know the same slope of the current mode control it will not be stable so that means your emulated slope has to be larger than the slope of the actual inductor rising slope otherwise your current loop will be unstable because of this one sample one cycle delay and we'll analyze this in the modeling and the stability analysis i think it will be in week 4 or week 5 but we'll discuss this stability in the current loop stability analysis for fully digital current mode control using one sample delay so our objective that we cannot even choose mc which is same as m1 then it will be inherently unstable the current loop okay so but it is a feasible sampling because of one cycle delay and we have to suitably select the mc so in summary we have discussed overview of sampling method in digital current mode control we have discussed mixed signal current mode control and different control wave form we have discussed fully digital current mode control initially we started with in like a same point sampling and use but it was practically not possible then we have used one cycle delay and we have implemented fully digital current mode control wave form so i hope uh, we got a reasonably good idea about fixed frequency digital current mode control architecture and we want to summarize this architecture in the next presentation thank you very much